Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off with news of the RTX 3080 Ti, specifically updated specifications for this upcoming GPU. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll know that I recently uploaded a video to debunk the fact that this card was indeed cancelled. Many had thought that Janssen was cancelling the card, but in my video I basically said that no, it was just heavily delayed. This card, I'd been told, was originally intended to come out January or February, and indeed that was the commonly thought release date. But I've been told that most likely it could not actually see the light of day until around summer. But yeah, getting back to the specifications then, the RTX 3080 Ti, or possibly the RTX 3080 Super, the naming scheme is a little up in the air, but we'll get more into that in just a moment. I'm going to call it the 3080 Ti just for our sanity though. But yeah, up until quite recently, this card had thought to be pretty much identical to the RTX 3090, albeit with cuts in the memory configuration. So commonly it was thought to be a 20 gigabyte model. Obviously that means that the memory interface was cut down to just 320 bit. And of course that was to give it a degree of separation between the 3090 and the RTX 3080 Ti. But then I was hearing rumours as well as kopd 7 Kimmy also uh, tweeted that we may see this card release in a 12 gigabyte format. And again, this card is considerably cheaper than the RTX 3090. Apparently Janssen wants to release this at 1000 US dollars, which of course pits it squarely against the RX 6900, nice, XT. But yeah, Kopity has also tweeted again, and Janssen is considering yet another configuration, and this one cuts the number of CUDA cores down to 10,240, which is obviously a small snip from the RTX 3090. And why is this? Well, this is speculation on my part, but I imagine this is possibly due to pricing as well as, again, separation from the Halo SKU. As you are probably aware, the more um, bits of a die which need to be enabled, the lower the yields are for that specific SKU. And obviously the RTX 3090 has a much higher margin of profit. If I had to guess, one of the ways that NVIDIA are going to release this card at, let's say, US dollars is to slightly reduce the number of CUDA cores and therefore you have basically more dies which would make the grade and combine this with presumably a 12 gigabyte uh, VRAM buffer which I think should be fine honestly for an RTX 3080 Ti. Um, yeah, this would kind of make sense specification wise. Of course, how well this would perform in the real world would also depend on a myriad of other factors, not least of which what clock frequency we finally get out of this GPU. And yeah, it would also mean that this card is definitely faster than the RTX 3080, but not necessarily hugely faster than the RTX 3080. Oh, and while I'm on the subject, let's talk about naming schemes. So this could be one of the reasons that NVIDIA are calling this the RTX 3080 Ti. Pure speculation, I do wonder if NVIDIA will eventually start to replace the RTX 3080 Ti with this specific SKU, much like they're going to do with the RTX 3070 and other SKUs, or whether they're going to coexist. I mean, if they do coexist, that would also kind of make some level of sense because of the price disparity. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, NVIDIA were considering at least some type of reshuffle of this stack. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of that plays out. And also, while I'm on the subject of reshuffling, there was a lot of reports floating around that NVIDIA were actually cancelling the RTX 30 Founders Edition GPUs. And a lot of websites have subsequently updated this, but I did want to just throw it in here anyway. Uh, basically, it was just an error on the website. So, for whatever reason, the website was reporting that there were no RTX 3080 SKUs available, again, for the Founders Edition models, and this is not the case. Of course, availability still sucks balls. So, yeah, I mean, available is... Available is down to perception, 
But yeah, um, at the end of the day, NVIDIA will still continue to manufacture this. And yeah, it, it's kind of interesting because AMD, of course, did much the same for the reference design of the RX 6000 series. Typically, AMD doesn't really like to produce reference designs for too long uh, because obviously, yeah, it just... Most people do prefer, of course, to buy the AIB models, but we all know what's been going on with the pricing recently. Speaking of pricing, Perpety actually did drop another nugget, and this concerns availability of the GPUs. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't mean that Papa Jansen has trebled the amount of cards which are being produced, and I suspect that availability is still going to be slim over the next quarter at the minimum, much like AMD are facing, of course, with RDNA 2, as well as a plethora of other products. Xbox, PlayStation, CPUs, and so on. But apparently Jansen is considering fighting against miners. And how exactly this can be achieved, I'm not certain. Perhaps one of the things we have to go on, though, is um, the CFO of NVIDIA. She recently stated that NVIDIA were not exactly against the idea of starting to create mining-specific cards again. Now, of course... This may cause some people to recoil in horror because that means that you're reducing the n amount of uh, GPUs that can be produced for gamers. After all, uh, Samsung, you know, 8nm process go bruh, but there's only a certain amount of availability that they've got. This is probably not the case necessarily, though, because obviously m GPUs destined for them are mines. They don't need specific parts to function. For example, TMUs, they don't need to work. ROPs don't need to work. In fact, they don't need anything to do with display. So in theory, NVIDIA could actually do a double dip, as it were, and GPUs which don't make the cut, for example, let's say TMUs are damaged, they could repurpose those for mining specific products. We'll wait and see whether that happens or whether they'll produce something very specific for mining. Maybe, for example, they could release Turing products, which would be cheap and readily available, and of course, also on a different process. Again, I'm spitballing here. I don't really know for certain. But it might also be that NVIDIA will somehow either alter the software or firmware, to be more accurate, or drivers so that future cards which are released, such as the RTX 3080 Ti, just for example, they will not support certain mining software. I wouldn't be surprised if eventually there was a way to hack this or change this, but who knows? And yeah, that might be a way for them to do that. They could also make it so that future driver updates, they do not work for a specific miner. So that might also, you know, be a way forward. However, let's just be realistic here. It's not exactly rocket science to be like, huh, the driver doesn't work for this version. Let's just roll back to an earlier driver. It's not exactly difficult, even if NVIDIA were really, really persistent about this and left like a registry key. Even after you've removed it, you could use like something like DDU. And yeah, there would be a whole issue about that, I think. But more likely, they will just make it so that future cards which are released, maybe, for example, we could see this with RTX 3060. Although, honestly, I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Uh, but yeah, those specific SKUs possibly will not be supported in the driver. I would be okay with that, um, honestly. Uh, I think most of us would. And speaking of things which go brr, you will not be going brr if you plug in the 11900K to your central heating system, or I guess more accurately, plumb it into your central heating system, because the 11900K is getting rather toasty in some burn-in tests which have been conducted in Chip Hell. Again, I want to stress this is a burn-in test, but <laughs> yeah, it gets kind of warm. How warm? 98 Celsius. And this is with a 360 mm AIO cooler. So it's not exactly a stock heat sink and fan or anything like that. So allegedly this is hitting 250 watts, well 250.83 to be exact. But the default package is 125. So why is this? Well, of course, it's just to do with the CPU boosting and ramping up to higher clock frequencies as workloads are being done. Higher end boards typically tend to boost higher because obviously they, you know, expect people to want the maximum performance possible 
but Rocket Lake does seem to be rather toasty. In these specific ones, we don't know what the duration, tau, T-A-U, is set to, and we don't know what PL1 or 2 are also uh, set to either, but either way, um, the Rocket Lake sample is allegedly pulling 1.325 volts. So this is definitely a worst case scenario for the chip. Um, assuming that this is pretty much what we would expect from a retail sample, and obviously we don't have a retail sample yet to test, this is obviously rather warm, and I would certainly not suggest that you put this into a, you know, a small form factor build with a weedy cooler. But again, because this processor is boosting uh, most likely, and we again don't know what those settings are, and the second factor is that this is a burn-in test, which means that it's basically the worst kind of, yeah, it's just pretty much the worst workload possible. It's designed specifically to get the temperatures of the processor as hot as possible. I'm not exactly saying that this is ideal though, and let's face it, I don't exactly expect this process to be like hitting 40, 40 degrees um, during gaming workloads. It's still going to be pretty darn warm, but it's probably not going to be quite this ridiculous. And we have seen some reports that the processors are hitting like 5.3 gigahertz or something around there, but the temperatures were still really high, even though it wasn't a burning test. Um, of course, the package technically can take these temperatures, but yeah, even if you live in this magical world where you don't need to pay, pay for power and you don't actually need to worry about cooling the processor itself, it's still pumping up a ton of heat into the internals of the system. I still feel that the 11700 and the 11600 um, processors are probably going to be the best CPUs for most people in the Rocket Lake lineup if you do want to go to Rocket Lake, but we'll have to wait and see what the actual reviews are saying. While we're on the subject of Intel, I'd like to discuss a rather fascinating report from DigiTimes, and that is that TSMC will indeed be producing silicon for Intel, utilizing their free NM process. Now, there is definitely a lot to take in here, so of course I will link Chia's uh, tweet in the video description, as along with the Chip Hell article. So Chia has actually, also known as Retired Engineer, has very graciously um, translated the article, which means that we can actually read it, not have to rely on machine translation. The synopsis here is that both Intel and TSMC will be producing silicon for Intel, although the report doesn't detail exactly what uh, the split is and what products will be manufactured by which company, at least as yet. And that Intel will, of course, also be focused on more advanced processes for after free NM. I have to say that it's kind of weird at the moment because there are so many reports of Intel are not going to be using TSMC and then simultaneously there's tons of reports that they will be using TSMC. And I think ultimately there's just kind of a lot of guesswork at the moment. It really wouldn't surprise me either way. The only other thing we can say is that um, Pat Gelsinger, who is of course just about to take over as Intel's CEO, has said, and I quote, the majority of 2023 products will be manufactured internally, but a portion of outsourcing will still increase. So yeah, we can kind of expect that that's gonna be roughly the date that would be pertinent to this news but there's not really a whole lot there to go on from Pat. And from his comment, it seemed that the majority of the products are going to be manufactured internally by Intel. I will be interested to see if we actually see this come to fruition, because obviously if it was to happen, you can imagine that just about every company at this point will be utilizing uh, TSMC, at least for something or another. And of course, the big ones at the moment are Apple and AMD. And you can imagine that both of those are looking at FreeNM with great interest. FreeNM, of course, has not actually entered mass production yet. But even so, of course, customers are already booking now because, yeah, just because everyone wants to use TSMC's node. And in the final piece of news for today, AMD and Tesla, they have made sweet love, well, maybe not quite, but they have come together in a rather interesting combination, and that is that AMD are providing a chip for Tesla, and this is not for AI for the self-driving car portion of the vehicle. Instead, this is an RDNA2-based chip, 
which is going to be used in infotainment. This is, of course, for playing games or kind of handling whatever entertainment in the vehicle itself. Now, to give full credit, Patrick on Twitter actually leaked about this a while ago, and yeah, it seems to be accurate. He actually stated that neither AMD nor Tesla were particularly happy about the leak, but this thing is putting out about 10 teflops of performance. The room is with the specification we're looking at 32 compute units, and according to Elon Musk, yes, it can play not only Witcher, but also Cyberpunk. I think this is pretty darn cool, honestly. Um, as for the vehicle itself, it is actually a Tesla Model S and it's going to retail at the princely sum of uh, 80,000 US dollars. So obviously they haven't actually done a major redesign of the internals of the uh, vehicle for a while now. I believe it's like 2012, something like that. So this is definitely a rather big upgrade for the vehicle itself. Um, and yeah, so if you're waiting for someone, you can play cyberpunk in your futuristic car which is pretty darn awesome with that said though thank you very much for checking out the video if you have enjoyed it you know what to do like share and of course subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so because it's the land of youtube and also click the bell icon as well with that said take care of yourselves bye for now